The movie starts by showing a secret group called the Six Seas. They have only six members, and we don't know who they are. The Six Seas were created to keep things safe and in order because the Triants, a powerful group in Southeast Asia, asked them to. The Triants control a lot of illegal stuff in Asia, like drugs, weapons, and trading women. Then, the scene changes and we see a beach at sunset. There's a little girl named Rina, and she's all covered in blood because something bad happened. When she looks back at her village on the beach, she sees some armed people hurting everyone, even her parents. A man named Ido, who's one of the six C's, gets ready to shoot Reina, the only person left from the village. But when he sees how scared and all alone she is after losing her family, he feels really sorry for her. Surprisingly, Ido doesn't shoot her. Instead, he turns and shoots the Triant soldiers who hurt the villagers. Then he takes Reina with him and goes back to his hometown, Jakarta. After arriving there, Ido took Reina to Sinta's house. Sinta was Ido's ex-girlfriend and had thought he was dead because he had been missing for three years. Sinta asked about Reina and why Ido had brought her, but Ido couldn't explain everything in detail because he didn't want to put Sinta in danger. After taking care of Ido's injuries, Sinta got in touch with Fei Ti. Fei Ti used to be in a gang with Ido and was his old friend. Fei Ti wondered why Ido was risking everything by saving Rina, especially after working for the tribe for three years. They should have trusted him completely by now. Fei Ti mentioned that news of Ido's betrayal had started to spread, and it was only a matter of time before the tribe tracked him down. Ido told Fei Ti that all he wanted was to leave the country and find a safe place for Rina. To do that, he needed money and new identities for both of them. He didn't want to put Fati and the others in danger, so he asked Fati to keep their whereabouts a secret from their gang members. However, it turned out that their gang already knew about Ido's situation. Fati mentioned that the only remaining gang members besides him were Wishnu and Bobby. AVT also asked Ido about Arian, who used to work for the Triad. Ido informed Fati that Arian was now living in Macau and was running a nightclub for the Triad. Arian was working at a nightclub when he found out that some guys had mistreated one of the waitresses. He didn't want trouble at his workplace, so he stepped in and fought them off really harshly. Later, Arian got a call from a guy named Chan Wu, who was a member of the Six Seas, a group like the one Ido used to be in. Chan Wu told Arian that Ido had betrayed their group by killing some Triad soldiers to save a girl named Reina. Chan Wu asked Arian to help him get rid of Ido and join the Six Seas as a new member. Arian thought it sounded interesting, so he agreed. While heading to Jakarta, Arian remembered the time he and Ido became part of the Triad and promised to serve them forever. When he got to Jakarta, two women named Alma and Elena, who worked for Chan Wu and the Triad, picked him up. Chan Wu explained that the villagers on the beach were punished because they had stolen drugs from the Triad and tried to sell them to others. He wanted Arian to kill Rina because she was the only person who had seen the Triad do the bad things. If she wasn't dealt with carefully, she could cause problems for them. Chan Wu talked to Arian and told him that the Triad wanted to start a business in Jakarta. If Arian could successfully do his job of getting rid of Ido and Rina, Chan Wu would hand over the business to him. Next, we see Ido and Rina at Fati's apartment, where they're taking pictures for making passports. After that, Bobby told Ido that one of their team members, Johan, had betrayed them and taken all their money. Johan now owns a butcher shop and is working for the Triad to expand their drug business in Jakarta and beyond. Because Ido needed money, he went to Johan at his butcher shop. Johan already knew where Ido was in Jakarta, and he tried to distract Ido so he could take his gun. But Ido was quick and attacked Johan, pointing his gun at him. Johan surrendered under the threat of the gun and said he would give Ido the money. However, the money was in a safe in the shop, and it seemed like Johan had set a trap for Ido because his men were ready with weapons to attack him. There was a big fight, but even though Ido was alone against Johan's men, he managed to defeat them all and went after Johan. 
In desperation, Johan finally gave Ido the money he wanted and told him that he had sent his men to Feiti's apartment to kill Rina. After a while, a group of dishonest police officers who had been paid off by the trine showed up. They managed to subdue Ido and then arrested him, unfortunately killing Johan in the process. Meanwhile, in another location, Johan's men were seen heading to Feiti's apartment fully armed. Bobby, who already knew they were coming, told Sinta to leave. In the elevator, Bobby was able to take down two of Johan's men. Before entering Feiti's apartment, Bobby hid two metal plates under his shirt. He then burst into Feiti's apartment, where Feiti and his friends were surrounded by Johan's men. A fierce fight broke out between them. Even though there were only three of them, Feiti, Bobby, and Wishnu, facing a much larger group of Johan's men, they managed to defeat them. Fei Ti then asked Bobby where Sin Ta was and mentioned that he had told her to stay as far away as possible. Before long, Johan's men returned, and their numbers were increasing, making it difficult for the three of them to handle. Fei Ti and his two friends, who were former gang members, had excellent fighting skills, so they could take on several people at once. Somewhere else, Arian was sitting in his car, watching what was happening in Fei Ti's apartment building. It seemed like he was waiting for the right moment to attack Fei Ti and the others. At the same time, Ido had just woken up and was trying to break free from his restraints. He fought against the corrupt police officers who had arrested him and tried to run away from there. After a tough struggle inside a cramped police car and driving really fast, Ido finally managed to beat the corrupt cops and hurried to get to Fei Ti's apartment because Rina's life was in danger. Knowing that Johan's men failed to kill Fei Ti and the others, Chan Wu told Alma, Elena, and the Triad soldiers to finish them off. Elena arrived first with some Triad soldiers and faced Bobby. Bobby was ready to fight the Triad to the end while his friends tried to save themselves. But Elena, who was a professional assassin, easily defeated Bobby. Elsewhere, Wishnu, who was trying to escape with Rina, was confronted by Alma, another skilled assassin. Killing Wishnu was not a challenge for her. Fati, who saw his cousin Wishnu brutally killed right before his eyes, became angry and tried to attack Alma. However, Fati was already tired and seemed to be overwhelmed by her. Not long after, Arian arrived and stopped Alma just as she was about to kill Fati. An intense battle unfolded between the two tried enforcers, both with exceptional fighting skills. Arian managed to paralyze Alma and make her faint. Fei Ti thought that Arian was the one who had told Johan and the Triad where they lived. Arian said he had no other choice and tried to convince Fei Ti to start over with him instead of being killed. But Fei Ti was furious because Arian indirectly caused the death of their friends. He almost shot Arian, then rushed to take Reina and escaped by car. As Fei Ti was about to drive Reina to safety, the Triad soldiers arrived and stopped them. Fei Ti quickly told Reina to hide while he faced the Triad soldiers. Another gunfight broke out, but in the end, Fei Ti lost his life. When the Triad soldiers approached Fei Ti to make sure he was really dead, they suddenly came under attack from a mysterious woman who called herself the Operator. She killed the Triad soldiers and checked Fei Ti's condition to confirm he was dead. Afterward, the operator left the scene, and Ido finally arrived, shocked to find out that all of his friends had been killed. Knowing that Ido was coming, Reina left her hiding place. Ido hurried to take her away from there. He called Sinta and told her to leave Jakarta right away and not go back to her apartment for a while. Ido and Reina then went to Sinta's apartment, where she told them about Fei Ti's last words, how he said they should never regret their actions and encouraged her to be brave. Elsewhere, Elena was very angry when Arian showed up at Chan Wu's place, and she wanted to attack him in revenge for his attack on Alma. But Chan Wu stopped Elena and asked Arian to talk with him privately. Chan Wu explained to Arian that he targeted Fei Ti, Bobby, Wish Nu, and Johan because they used to be in the same gang as Arian and Ido. Chan Wu told Arian that if he wanted to join the Six Seas, he needed to forget about his family and friends. He gave Arian one more chance to kill Ido and offered him a place in the Six Seas. Arian accepted the offer, 
but he wanted to take over Johan's position, who was running the Triant's drug business in Jakarta. Chan Wu agreed to the condition. Back at Sinta's apartment, the operator approached Ido and attacked him. They had a fierce fight, and the operator almost had Ido cornered with a gun to his head. But just as the operator was about to kill Ido, Reina suddenly appeared and begged her not to do it. The operator put her gun down and sat with Ido. The operator already knew about Ido, who was part of the Six Seas, and asked why he saved Reina when the Triad had ordered everyone in the village to be killed. He explained that being in the Six Seas meant working as a killing machine for the Triad. They would only bring death and receive death orders, without any exceptions. However, when Ido saw Reina, he felt something inside him, a sense of conscience, and thought he could change his fate by saving her. Hearing this, the operator decided not to kill him and left. The next day, Arian seemed to recall his past with Ido and their friends. Back then, Ido had a fight with Bobby for getting involved with the Triad by selling drugs. Bobby argued that he was only trying to help their group financially because they could make a lot of money by selling drugs. Ido and Arian discussed it and decided to secretly leave their gang and join the Triad to protect Bobby and the others who were at risk of being killed by their gang. In the present, Arian contacted Ido and asked him to meet at the warehouse near the port, which used to be their group's base camp with Fei Ti and the others. Shortly after, the operator returned to Ido and revealed that her mission was to eliminate the Six Seas. She informed him that Arian had gathered the Triad soldiers in the warehouse to kill him. Ido had a plan to put an end to everything by going straight to the warehouse, so he asked the operator to keep Rina safe while he went to confront Arian. To make it short, Ido eventually reached the warehouse near the harbor, where the Triad soldiers were waiting for him. He got into a tough fight with them while the operator stayed at Sinta's apartment to protect Rina. Chan Wu had apparently ordered Alina, Alma, and some Triad soldiers to go to Sinta's apartment and kill Rina. However, the operator was already there and managed to defeat all the Triad soldiers. She eventually faced Alina and Alma, and they had a fierce battle. Although dealing with the two very skilled female assassins was tough at first, the operator eventually succeeded in defeating them. Meanwhile, Arian killed the sniper that Chan Wu had sent to eliminate Ido. After Ido managed to defeat all of Arian's men, they finally met face to face. Arian blamed Ido for the deaths of their friends. When he said he would take Ido's place in the Six Seas, Ido told him that Chan Wu was just using him. However, Arian didn't seem to care and attacked him. They had a close-range fight, a fierce battle between two old friends who had become enemies. In the end, Ido was able to match Arian, but he chose not to kill him and just walked away. Arian tried to shoot Ido, but he missed every shot. Soon after, Chan Wu showed up and was upset with Arian for failing to kill Ido. Arian attempted to shoot Chan Wu, but he ran out of bullets. Then, Chan Wu ordered six hitmen, led by Arian's assistant, to execute Arian on the spot. After that, the operator safely guided Reina to Ido and then left. Ido placed Reina on a departing ship, but didn't go with her. They said their goodbyes and waved at each other one last time. Ido, who was badly injured, got into his car, and saw Chan Wu and more Triad soldiers ahead of him. With a fierce grin, Ido drove his car toward them as they started shooting. What happened to Ido and the Triads remained uncertain. So the moral of the story is if you find yourself low on bullets, don't try to start a bullet-hungry trend with Hitman. Just wave goodbye and drive towards your destiny with a goofy grin.